astronomy is considered to be the mother of all scientific fields. When you are learning astronomy, you have participated in the oldest science in the history of mankind. Since the ancient past, astronomy was used for keeping track of the seasons. The oldest documented references to astronomy can be found in the Babylonian cuneiform tablets that show mankind's earliest study of the phases of the moon. Hence, oftentimes, Babylonia is considered to be the origin of the science of astronomy. However, recent discoveries from Sanskrit literature and archaeological findings from the Harappan sites and other archaic structures from India are revealing a different narrative of how the ancients studied the sky. The roots of Indian astronomy can be found in the carvings and artifacts that have been discovered in the archaic structures of ancient India. Recently discovered cave paintings and stone etchings in Kashmir, dating back to almost 20,000 years before present, have ignited a new mystery. The rock carving found in Burzahama region in Kashmir depicts what is believed to be a hunting scene with the presence of two bright objects in the sky. Researchers believe that one of the bright objects might represent the sun or the moon, but they were befuddled by the presence of the second bright object. Some of the researchers believed that it represented two suns in the sky, and thus it could be possible that it portrayed the twin of the sun. However, no such evidence of a twin star system has been found in the past. The carving was supposedly done before 2000 BC and was visible from Burzahama. The second possibility that the astronomers considered is that the second bright object was a supernova. Supernova had been observed centuries ago. The oldest example is that of a Chinese reference to a guest star that was observed in the sky in the year 185 Anno Domina. Before fading away, the star was reportedly seen in the sky for eight months. The team of researchers went through the supernova catalog to search for a supernova that might have had brightness similar to the sun or the moon and was spotted in the sky of that region between 2000 BC and 10,000 BC. The team came across two options. They believe that the two bright lights might represent HB9. This supernova dates back to 4600 BC and its brightness was close to that of the moon. Scientists believe the supernova exploded sometime between 5000 BC and 2000 BC. Thus, the second brightest object in the sky could have been a supernova and thus one of the oldest references to astronomical observation in the world. A notable case of interpreting one of the indices in the astronomical context was presented by the Finnish scholars in their research publication of 1970. The square seal bears the picture of a ram with long wavy horns and a human face, a deity with wide crescentic horns standing within the bifurcate boughs of a people tree, a priest kneeling outside at the base of the tree in a posture of supplication before the deity, and a tier of seven other deities standing in the lower portion of the seal. As per some of the archaeoastronomical researches, this might be the depiction of the northern and the southern sky of 2500 BC. The deity with the crescentic horns is identified as Jupiter of the Indus, while the ram with long wavy horns resembles the constellation of Aries having Ashwini and Bharani. The tier of seven deities standing in the lower portion is often considered to be the Saptarishi or the seven sages. Other sources consider them as the depiction of the Pleiades or the seven sisters of Krutika. The depiction of the Pleiades for the seven deities also fits in the Indus pictographs recognition of the fish sign as signifying stars in general seems to be confirmed in the few cases where the names of constellations in Old Tamil have been equated with expressions combining a fish with a specific number of the vertically drawn numerical strokes. The Old Tamil names Elumin, meaning the seven stars of the asterism of Saptarishi in Arsa Major. The name Arumin, meaning six stars of the nakshatra asterism Kritika or Pleiades. And the name 
Mumamin, that is three stars of the Nakshatra Mrugashirsha. All these archaic structures evince the development of astronomy in ancient India. In the classical Siddhanta period, astronomy was compiled in the form of Siddhantas. A Siddhanta means a theorem or a treatise in a broader sense. A Siddhanta is structured in such a way that it consists of two sections. The first section is called Graha Ganita Adhyay, which is further subdivided into three types. The Madhya Adhyay, which deals with the mean motion of the planets, the Spashta Adhyay, which deals with the true motion of the planets, and the Triprasna Adhyay, which deals with the questions related to direction, place, and time. The second section of the Siddhanta is called the Gola Adhyay, which is a section dedicated to the study of spherical trigonometry. The Gola Adhyay also consists of a separate chapter called Yantra Adhyay, which discusses the yantras that are used for astronomical observation. Out of the 18 Siddhantas, some of them are anonymous and have been presented as revelations from the gods themselves. The 18 Siddhantas are as follows. Out of these, the Surya Siddhanta is considered as the oldest astronomical text in India along with a non-Siddhanta text called Vedanga Jyotisha. It is also believed that Surya Siddhanta has been edited over the period of centuries and what we know today is the modern version of Surya Siddhanta that was last edited during the time of Varahamira in 505 AD. Some of the works have been written by distinguished astronomers like Aryabhata I who wrote Aryabhatiya and Aryabhata Siddhanta in around 500 AD. In these notable works, Aryabhata has explained the lunar and the solar eclipses, sinusoidal functions, a method to calculate the length of the sidereal year and the method to calculate the diameter of the earth. Varahamira was another Indian astronomer in 550 AD who had composed the Pancha Siddhantika, which is a compilation of five astronomical treatises. Out of these five, three of them are Indian texts, namely Surya Siddhanta, Vashishta Siddhanta and the Paitamaha Siddhanta. The remaining two are Romaka Siddhanta, which is the translation of Roman astronomy into Sanskrit, and Paulisha Siddhanta, which is the translation of the works of Paul of Alexandria into Sanskrit. An astronomer named Brahmagupta, who had written two ingenious treatises, namely the Brahma Sputta Siddhanta and the Khanda Bhatyava. Brahmagupta has devised some intriguing methods of astronomical observation along with mathematical formulas and the modifications for the earlier formulas mentioned in the older texts. Other notable astronomers include Lalla, who composed the Shishadhi Vridhidha Tantra, Manjula, who composed the Laghu Manasa and the Brahan Manasa. Shripati, who composed Siddhanta Shekhara, Bhaskara I, who composed Mahabhaskarya and Lagu Bhaskarya, and finally Bhaskara II, who composed the Siddhanta Shirom. We are going to make a separate video series about these astronomers, so do check it out. The ancient Indian astronomers also made scrupulous observations of the planets, stars, moon, and the sun. We find the names of certain asterisms and constellations in the Rigvedic. Siddhantic astronomy. Orion the hunter is called Mruga in Indian astronomy, which means a deer. The six stars of Pleiades were called Kritika or the six mothers of Kartike. The asterism of Big Dipper in Ursa Major is identified as the Saptarishis. The constellation of Coma Berenices is identified as Arundhati Kesh in Indian astronomy. Ursa Minor is called Shishumar, which was symbolic of a celestial crocodile. The constellation of Corvus was called Hasta. Along with constellations, the ancient Indians had also named certain prominent stars in the sky. Betelgeuse is identified as Kakshi. Sirius was called as Vyad. Aldebaran is called Rohini. Spica is called Chitra. Arcturus is called Swati. Vega is called Abhijit. Polaris is called as Dhruva. Canopus is identified as Sage Agasthi. Capella was called Brahmarudhai. Castor and Pollux were called Aditi and Diti. And Bizar and Alcor were identified as Vashishtha and Arunta. Indian astronomy has its origins in an anti-Diluvian era 
and the sheer amount of literature on astronomy itself is evidence of the intellectual prowess and the incredible fervor of the ancient Indians. In today's age, most people are unaware of Indian astronomy and the rest of them are dispassionate about studying it at all. Through this project, we are going to bring in loads of knowledge and information not just about astronomy but about other fields of Indology as well. If you find our research informative and our cause to be genuine, then please follow our page Satyalok on Instagram and share our videos with your followers and help us to spread the greatness and wisdom of ancient India with as many people as we can. We here at Satyalok are a group of young Indology enthusiasts who wish to present facts about the ancient Indian culture via careful analysis of the research papers from the peer-reviewed journals and the perusal of the ancient Indian texts. So stay tuned, stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Panthanaha Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Da 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 da